I've spent a few months now here with the ASUS VN247H-P 23.6 inch LED 1080p monitor and I'm here to quickly tell you that I do not recommend it. Now, everyone's gonna throw the argument at me, oh, this monitor's cheap, so it's not gonna be worth much anyway. If you're buying a product over $100, this one was about 200-ish, it's now about 163 on Amazon at the moment, it doesn't matter if it's cheap, it should still work. Being cheap, up to a certain point, and that point is definitely well below $100, a product is expected to work, and as far as I'm concerned, this product does not function very well for most of its users, based on my experience. Overall, this is a pretty nicely packaged monitor. It's a 23.6 inch panel. It runs, it has pretty thin bezels. It doesn't have the weird glossy plastic that my other LCD monitor from ASUS has. It has a totally flat, flat top bezel, which my other ASUS monitor is, has a slanted one, which makes mounting things like the Nintendo Wii motion bar and the PlayStation eye cam and webcams very difficult. This one's totally flat and boxy. It's a matte plastic instead of a glossy plastic, and it looks pretty cool. The stand is pretty handy, not too big, but it lacks any sort of tilt, swivel, rotate, etc. features, which is fine. Again, it's cheap. Cheap is an excuse to lack extra features. I mounted mine on a Visa mount on my wall anyway where I had my previous monitor. It actually looks really good overall too. It looks a lot better than my the one I keep referencing. I don't have the product number, but it's a 22 inch LCD monitor from ASUS. It actually looks really, really good. Playing games on even from console on both monitors, the LED one that I'm referring to here, the VN247H-P, actually looks pretty good. But there's a lot of on the technical side that doesn't seem to work right for me. It's also, to me, important to note that I'm actually on my second of this monitor. The first one I got had a strong blue line just automatically down the screen, and so I had to re return that one immediately and get a new one. A few months now after owning this one, this one now has a big burn in spot or burn spot on the bottom right hand area of the screen, and this isn't an image burn in, which shouldn't even be an issue in 2015 anyway. But literally, it's just a darker spot where, like, the white LEDs are dying off or whatever. I've had it for less than a year, and it's already dying. That's pretty unacceptable. One of my favorite things about this monitor, though, that I was pretty excited for was the inputs. Instead of having your standard VGA, DVI, HDMI, it actually just had VGA and two HDMI. And most of the monitors that I've ever bought don't have two HDMI. So that was going to be pretty great that I'd be able to hook up two HDMI sources to it. However, doing so causes me nothing but just frustration and problems, as it has a smart auto-detect input switching feature, which in theory is a good thing, but in practice, it's horrible. So typically on this monitor, I have a Windows 98 computer hooked up by a VGA to the VGA input, my main computer hooked up to the HDMI 1 input, and then my HDMI splitter switcher set up with all my consoles and my capture card hooked up to the second one. Well, at some point, one of the, multiple of those inputs are always gonna be streaming a video signal to the monitor. So the second one turns off, it switches inputs. So this is extremely frustrating when I'm trying to do something in the BIOS on my Windows 98 computer, and as soon as it restarts, it switches over to my main desktop and I can't hit the BIOS key in time to hit what I'm looking for because I have to sit there and switch it back over to the VGA. This would be a bit easier if the input switching was a bit better. The buttons underneath the screen are fairly easy to use. However, the actual input detection seems to just be broken. It uh, There will be times where I have my desktop, which is at most of the time, it's not at the moment, but most of the time running raw HDMI out of my graphics card to the monitor. There'll be times when it hits that input and it just says no signal and goes to sleep until I cycle it a few times and it finally realizes there's an input there. And then other times if it's like when my computer goes to sleep and other inputs are also asleep, it will for whatever reason go to sleep, the monitor will go to sleep, but then it'll flip back onto the blue screen saying no signal, check again, go to sleep, flip back on, check again, go to sleep. And you, especially if I'm like actually trying to sleep, having that blue screen keep flashing at me is just ridiculous. And I've yet to figure out any sort of situation in which the input switching does not screw me over. And it's enough that if you manually change an input, it will check to see if the input signal is there. And then after a certain amount of time, it will automatically switch for you if another input is active, just to assume that you picked the wrong input. Well, if it, for whatever reason, just fails to detect the input, just barely takes too long to do so, 
it'll flip back over to the other one, even though I know for freaking sure that there's an input on HDMI 1 that I wanted to look at, it'll just switch back to HDMI 2 after a few seconds because it's like, eh, I don't see anything. Urgh. Like overall, this is a pretty great monitor in terms of quality. 60 hertz, 1080p, looks super crisp, and the refresh rate is perfect. But the actual like technical functionality of this monitor on top of the LED burnout and the input switching, I just, please stay away from this monitor if you're looking for cheap monitor solutions at this moment. As I said in a previous video, I don't entirely like making negative reviews, but when I do have a strongly just notable bad experience with a product, I do find it important to make sure I make you guys aware of that. And I will be posting this review on Amazon and I love ASUS products. I've always loved ASUS products and I have another LCD monitor from ASUS that has served me really well, but this one is just, been so disappointing and the fact that I'm already on my second one and I, I just it sucks it really sucks that this is so bad thanks so much for watching guys be sure to check links in the description below to our patreon campaign where you can subscribe to us via a monthly contribution and receive early access to our videos and give us a small kickback or our social media profiles where you can follow us stay up to date things like that be sure to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos and potentially a new monitor at some point, and otherwise, I will catch you in a future video. I'm gonna go kick my monitor out a window. Woo! You've just watched another epic tech video from me, Epos Vox. Consider crushing that like button and subscribing to the channel. That way, you never miss an upload. Also, check the links in the description to follow me on Twitter and Facebook, and hit up our Patreon campaign for early access to videos. See you in the next epic tech video.